Welcome to Research Basics Video 4, a review of Google and Google Scholar. For those who don't know, Google is not only a search engine of the free and open web, it also searches publisher websites for scholarly articles via Google Scholar. In your academic research, you may actually find that you will need to use both of these tools to find more sources of information. It just depends on the requirements of your topic. For example, you may need government statistics, which are available on government websites, and you may want to jump into Google to find them. Or you may need more scholarly articles. As an additional resource to library databases, you can use Google Scholar. Let's start searching to see how they play together. Starting off with regular Google, I'm going to perform a simple basic search on my topic. With just a simple search, we have thousands and thousands of results. But you'll notice right here at the top, Google actually highlights scholarly articles on my topic. This is Google pulling in articles from Google Scholar. If I wanted to explore some of these results, I can of course click here. Now we are actually searching Google Scholar for scholarly articles. As we begin to look at our results, we can actually start to assess them a little. Google Scholar provides information about the author and the original publication, but we don't have very much information about what is inside it, including any references that they may have. Scholar does actually provide information, though, about who has cited them and related articles. Of course, this one right here at the top is a book. In fact, this is one of the books that we noticed in our catalog search. This particular item is actually a part of Google Books. If we click on the title, we can see a preview of the book, but not the entire thing. Looking at some of our other results, we notice that we have full text access over here on the right. If we wanted to investigate any one of these sources, we can jump into the full text and start reviewing the item. If we wanted to find out basic details about the article, we'd want to click here for the publisher's website information about this item. Do take note, when you're looking at the full text options, you'll often see links that just say full text. If you click on one of these links, this will actually search for this article in library databases. This is a key feature that you can set up to connect the library to Google Scholar. This database link right here will lead you to the full text article in one of our library databases. To actually set up this connection, head to Google Scholar and you'll want to click here to head to the main Google Scholar page. Here we are on the main Google Scholar page. If you look under settings, you have the option to adjust your library links. Type in Moorhead and be sure to connect to Moorhead State University full text. You can also do a search for WorldCat and connect to our catalog. Be sure to save and then you can start searching again. As I start to look at these results, I'm noticing that they're not necessarily on topic. They do have to do with privacy and the internet, but not as focused on wiretapping as I would like. You can, of course, start adding more key terms to Google Scholar. Google automatically includes the word and in between each one of these words. So if I wanted to continue to narrow down my results, I can keep adding words. Or I can start using some of those same Boolean operators that are useful in library databases to really start opening up my search. You notice that Google Scholar also gives you a limited number of limiters. The main one really is being able to play with your date range. Of course, if I wanted to continue my search with regular Google, it's extremely important to really review the types of resources that you have in front of you. For example, if we looked at this particular resource from CBS News, we'll notice that this particular article is your standard news resource that likely focuses on a recent event. Although some websites are pretty obvious on what their purposes are, like CBS News, well it's a news website. But if a website isn't as familiar, you'll definitely want to get to know it before you really use it as a resource. For example, let's take a look at this website. Here we have a website, it seems to be titled Surveillance Self-Defense, has a page about wiretapping and some information, of course, We'll want to take a look at the top and the bottom to see if we have any real information about this content. Just looking at the top and bottom, I don't see any particular date, so I'm not certain how current this information is. I also don't have an author. 
so I'm not exactly certain who wrote it or what their credentials are. If I can't find out information about the specific article, it's really good to take a look at the website itself. One of the best places to look, again, if you look at the top, perhaps you might find um, information about the organization or the sponsors of the website. But if you don't see at the top, then of course you can look at the bottom and find out more. So it looks like this particular website is a project of this organization, this foundation. Let's click on this link to find out more about them. Just from their tagline, we're starting to see a little bit about what this organization is about. They're about, obviously, defending your rights in the digital age. What does that mean exactly? Let's go to their About Us page. Looking at some of their information, we can get a sense that this is a nonprofit group that is focusing on consumers and the general public and trying to secure their freedoms. At least that's what the organization says it's doing. Considering the topic at hand, I might assume that this group is fairly biased against wiretapping, but I'd really need to investigate the articles that they have and their perspective. Are they a little bit more objective or not? So remember that as you're starting to really interact with the resources and the information available, be sure to evaluate those sources. No matter if the source is a website or a government document or a scholarly article. You'll just want to think about why is this particular source a great piece of evidence for my research or a great source of information. And of course, as you research, be sure to take notes, really evaluate those sources, and of course, we here at Moorhead State are absolutely here to help.